It's time for baseball on MLB Network. Today, the third and final game in this three-game series between the Minnesota Twins and the Texas Rangers. The Rangers attempt to break out the brooms in this three-game series right after this. Jordan Lyles gets the ball in game three of the series. What do we need to know here, Danny? Hey, just like batters go into slump, pitchers go into slumps too. This guy really struggled in his last one. He took the loss and wasn't able to get out of the third inning. Hopefully he can flip that mojo around in this one. So striding in, Luis Arias. He enters play sixth in the American League in the batting race. There's no way you could have forecasted this kind of season from this guy. Not to take anything away from him, but I don't think many people in baseball considered him to be one of the league's best hitters for average coming into this year. Two and one now to the Twins leadoff man. Fellas, this Rangers ball club, as they begin play, they've been hot of late, winners in four straight. Yeah, Maddie, this should be an interesting watch today because this team's playing well, all facets of the game. But they're facing an ace on the other side today, and they're going to have to jump on him early if they're going to have any chance. All even at two and two. Shorts and T-shirts, the order of the afternoon, 92 degrees here at first pitch. Lofted in the air out toward right center. Chu coming on. He makes the catch. A great effort to get there and record the first out of the That's inning. The Jorge Polanco. So the base is empty here with one away. And that will bring in Jorge Polanco to hit next. The 3-1. Oh, and this ball is absolutely blasted. High and deep. Gone! A solo home run for Jorge Polanco. Home run number nine on the year as the Twins take a 1-0 lead. What a way to get things started while playing on the road. Top of the first and a big fly just like that. And they take the lead. So striding forward now, Nelson Cruz. And there's a look at his home and road splits so far this year. One and two is the changeup had him out in front there. And set up behind the dish is Clyde Washington, as you see the rest of our umpiring crew there. Yeah, Matty, Clyde's my type of umpire. I didn't mind the low strike zone, and that's exactly what he has. If you're not going to give him above the belt, I'm okay with it. d you know one of the things, I guess, with Clyde is he is a real good low strike umpire. Pitchers seem to like him more than hitters, but one thing I will say, he has a very consistent zone. It's a low zone, but a consistent zone. Two balls and two strikes now. And a fastball blew it right by him, and there are two down. Anytime a pitcher locates a fastball on the inside corner, it's going to be a tough pitch to hit. That one was spot on, and he had no answer for it. Stepping in now, Miguel Sano. Skied into straightaway right. Chu giving chase. He's there to make the play, and that'll retire the side. But the Twins fire the opening salvo as they're on the board courtesy of this solo home run. Bottom of the first coming up. It's now 1-0 Minnesota. Jose Barrios gets the starting nod for the Twins. Dan, any thoughts? Hey, it's hard to have all four of your pitches on, but I think if this guy can have two or three of his four pitches and have command of them, he's going to have a really good game.
Into the box, Elvis Andrews. He'll lead things off here in the bottom half of the first. Hit down the third baseline, but this is a foul ball as the count holds steady at one and two. Barrios is sitting on 49 career pitching victories coming into this one, so potentially looking for number 50 here. And a good take there. Close, but it's two and two. This is a fun guy to watch when he's up there, really battles. Doesn't take any pitches off. He's a grinder. Always seems to make it difficult on the opposing pitcher. And he gets him to pop it up on the right side of the infield. And this is taken in for out number one. Batting second, the third baseman, Matt Duffy. Up next for the Rangers, Matt Duffy. And he's carrying a batting average of just over 300. So clearly he's been a productive player with the bat in his hand so far. Into the corner and slicing foul. Here now the 2-2. And now this ball's lifted in the air down the right field line, but this will get back into the seats, so the count holds at 2-2. Two and two. Got him swinging in the dirt. And the throw to first is there to record the second out. And here's the former prize Dodger prospect Willie Calhoun. And you can see his home road splits there. He has not fared very well in front of the home crowd, oddly enough. Two out, nobody on. Oh, they have him looking awfully confused up there right now. It's one and two. Hey, I can't have one of my best left-handed power bats fishing for balls off the plate. Now a fastball as he just reared up and let that one fly, and the inning is over. Rangers set down in order. They're on the short end of a one-to-nothing score. Here's the third baseman, Josh Donaldson. Lifetime versus Jordan Lyles. He's gone three for four. One one. Well, it's been a lopsided series so far with the Rangers dominating to this point and taking aim at a series sweep in this one. You know, and it's not an easy thing to complete a sweep, particularly in this day and age where the games and the teams are so competitive. So a sweep at home would be extra special. Now a curveball here, nowhere close. That's in the dirt. It's three and one. And one thing that would certainly help their cause in going for the sweep is if they can break out the big bats like they did yesterday. Several home runs in that ball game. It's not easy to hit home runs with this day and age with guys throwing with increased velocity. They were knocking the ball out of the ballpark all day yesterday. They'd like to save a couple of those and use them in this game today. And don't forget, he lost his last time out, so he wants to get off on the right foot here. The last thing he wanted was to walk the leadoff man. Donaldson on at first, nobody out. Fouled off. Ready with the two and two. Swing and a miss as he ran the fastball right by him for the first out. Got him with a good high fastball there. Danny, we see a lot of that pitch in strikeout situations these days. What makes it so effective? I think, Matt, what makes it such a tough pitch is you're changing eye levels. That fastball up looks so enticing to hit that you think you see that ball as a hitter. You think you can drive it, but it's really hard to get on top of that good high hard fastball. At the plate, Eddie Rosario. And he takes ball two, and it's two and one. The Rangers will, however, have to beat their opposition's best as they've got to go up against their ace in this one. When you're playing as well as this team is right now, they've got them right where they want them. They're only down one early in this one, and when you've won a couple of games in a row already, you have that feeling you can certainly come back and win this one. Here now the 2-2. Two -two. 
not a bad time right here to put that runner in motion. 3-2 count. You send the runner, and if it's a bad pitch, it's ball four. Now the payoff pitch home. Runner at first here, one man out. Popped him up. Guzman camps under it, and he's got it for route number two. Max Kepler the next to grab a bat. And for him, you have to think a turnaround is coming. Clearly not going his way of late. Here comes the 3-1 pitch. 3-2, Three, two, two out, runner on first. Lots of possible outcomes on this pitch. Now the payoff pitch home. All over that one, but a little out in front. Foul ball. Had to sit back on the changeup, and he did a good job to get the bat on that one. Neither guy given in. Here's the next one. That's fouled off to the left side as he makes him do it again. Three and two. And it's fouled away. Already 24 pitches to this point in the inning. Hit hard back up the middle. And Andrus will not be able to get there. It's a base hit. And the throw will come in quickly from center, so despite the hit and run, they won't get the extra base here. There's a hard hit ground ball. Pitcher not able to get a glove on it. Hard single up the middle. Yeah, watch your lips right there, Dan. Sent it back right where it came from. Standing in now, Byron Buxton. Oh, had him off stride that time, and it's one and two. Made him look silly with that one. Fastball laid off well below the knees. Wow, kind of an interesting pitch call there. The batter flailed at the pitch away on the previous one, so you'd think you'd go right back there, but instead they decided to come in. Make him prove he can adjust before you do. Line toward the gap in left center. And this is going to get down for extra bases as that'll get one, if not both of them, home. And both runners will score. It's now a three to nothing ball game. Usually a hitter will shorten his swing with two outs, but not this guy. He puts a big charge into this one and drives in a couple of runs along the way. That can be frustrating as a pitcher when you had a guy on the ropes and you couldn't finish him off, especially when he drives in runs. Into the box now, Luis Arias. And a slider's in the dirt as he lays off it for a ball. The classic back foot slider right there with two strikes. Usually gets a ton of swing and misses. Nice layoff right there. Fight for another pitch. Line, but speared on a hop. Throw on to Guzman at first, and the inning is over. So it's two runs on two hits, no errors, and a runner left. We'll go to the bottom half of inning number two. Minnesota leads this one three to nothing. So that brings up the big bat of Joey Gallo. He went deep in the contest last night. Hey, we're still in the early stages in this one. They're only down by a couple of runs, but it's really key for this leadoff guy to try to get on and get a big inning started. Well, the one-two pitch didn't go his way, and now a miss there on two and two. You know he doesn't want this at bat to get away from him, so I think we're going to see a challenge pitch on a full count. Lofted in the air out toward right center. There to take it is Cruz, and that's the first out. Batting the center fielder. Danny. 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 
So next to the plate for Texas, Danny Santana. As the switch hitter will take his cuts left-handed here. More of a comfortable side from the left side. Puts the ball in play. More of a contact hitter from the left side. Might have grown up being a natural left-handed hitter. And he fouls this one off. The 2-2. Two -two. Line drive snagged on a short hop. And that's the second out. Shinsu Chu at the plate now. It was a two-hit effort for him, including a home run in last night's game. Bases are empty here with two men out. Here's a fly ball well hit. Racing back the center fielder. On the warning track, he makes the catch. One, two, three, go the Rangers. Still down, three, nothing. Welcome back to Arlington. Before we get much further, let's check in with Heidi. Thanks, Matt. In between innings, I was able to catch up with the manager of the Twins to discuss his thoughts on Minnesota's lineup so far. And flat out, he was very pleased with the quality of their at-bats. They've been able to push across three runs to this point, but they've also made the opposition work extremely hard. He's thrown a lot of pitches, and they think they're going to have a good opportunity to push across a lot more runs as he tires or as they get into that bullpen. All right, Heidi, thank you. Top of the third set to get underway. And stepping in is the veteran shortstop, Jorge Polanco. One of the keys to securing a win, they want to keep the pressure on and try to build. There's a swing and a ball hit in the air and a ball that he got every stitch of as that one, without a doubt, is gone. A solo shot here to straightaway right field. His second home run of the game as the Twins are looking good here, up four to nothing. Well, in just a little more than two innings of work, he's given up two homers. Could be just one of those games for him. We'll see how much rope they give him. It's definitely getting shorter at the moment. Late now, Nelson Cruz. High pop up. Guzman in foul ground. One away. Now that. So the big bat of Miguel Sano digs in next. Flied out in his first at bat, so make him 0 for 1 so far. Almost, Matty. Almost went deep his last A.B. Certainly just missed it. With this guy's big power, he's feeling pretty good at the dish. Look for him to try and get on something and drive it out of the yard this A.B. Misses. Ball two. Looks like this guy's afraid to throw the ball in the strike zone. Gave up that home run earlier in the inning. Needs to get back to being aggressive. Here now the 2-2. He is swung on and missed. He got him on strikes. Man, I love watching a pitcher that just rears back and blows smoke by a guy at the letters. That's the ultimate challenge pitch. And for me personally, watching hitters swing and miss, man, that's a sight of beauty. So now to the plate, Josh Donaldson. Swing and a screamer, but this one's not going to stay fair. Off the plate that time and a little high. It's even at two and two. And there's ball three on a breaking ball that misses away. Having a hard time putting this hitter away here. And when I was looking at the tape on him from his last start, this is what I saw a lot of. He's not closing the door on guys, and, and when that's the case, they eventually get a pitch that they can do something with. Two out, nobody on. Swung on and missed, and that's the final out of the inning. But the Twins add on thanks to this solo shot. 
bottom of the third coming up. And the Twins have taken a 4-0 lead. We're back now as the Rangers lineup readies for their third turn with the bats. And unfortunately for them, this club has had its issues on offense. Entering the day, they rank near the bottom of the league in batting average, on-base percentage, and slugging. So it's clear this is a work in progress. One player told me before the game, it's a difficult thing to go through. We're all competitive guys, and we believe in ourselves, but we're obviously not getting the results we need. Now, one coach told me that despite the numbers being what they are, he's seeing a lot of development happening. So he's optimistic about what the future holds, especially for some of their younger players. Back to you, Matt. Good stuff, Heidi. Thanks. And good patience exercised as he works out the walk to lead off the home half of the third. They haven't been able to register a hit against this guy, but at least they have a base runner here. We'll see if that leads to something. So coming to the plate, Robinson Chirinos. He'll get to take his first cuts here. Just a bit high with the fastball, but didn't get the call. This situation right here reminds me of sitting on the bench talking to John Smoltz, Hall of Famer. He would always say, even though the situation looked bad, a pitcher is one pitch away from getting himself out of a tough jam. The 3-1. Lifted into the air out towards center field. Buxton will settle under it to make the play for the first out as the runner will have to head back to first. So a runner on first with one out now, and that'll bring up the second baseman, Rugnit Odor. Rangers still searching for hit number one in the ballgame. Swing and a liner toward the gap in left center. But this will hang up just enough as he takes it in in stride in left center for the second out. The batter, not shortstop, Elvis Andrews. So two are gone here in the Rangers' third, and that'll bring up the shortstop, Elvis Andrews. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Matt Duffy would be next if they can keep this inning alive. Ready on three and one. Here's the pitch. Lifted in the air to center. Buxton is there and he'll make the catch to retire the side. Rangers leave one. They're down four nothing. Ready for another chance. Mitch Garver 0 for 1 for him here in this one. The 1-1. One, one. Grounded back up the middle. A door is there. Throw to first in time. One gone here in the fourth. Digging in for his second at bat, Eddie Rosario. He popped out in his first trip. Yeah, I don't mind him trying to drive the ball in the air, but he can't collapse the backside, and that's exactly what he did in his last at bat. Look for him to stay a little taller and keep that upper half a little bit more over him. Ball taken there, two and one now. Four runs, four hits, and no errors in the ball game for Minnesota. Fastball catches the black there for a called strike. Outside in a full count, three and two.
And there's a base hit on the line. Well, pitching poorly once like he did in his last start, it's going to happen here or there, but he's struggling here again, too, and there has to be some concern. And part of it is probably psychological. He's got to get those here-we-go-again thoughts out of his head. In now, Max Kepler. Swing and a miss, and it's a ball and two strikes here. Runners on first with one down. Swing and a miss at the curveball, and there's your second out of the inning. Pretty textbook breaking ball for the punch out right there. Got it to bend a lot, and by the time it got there, it had fallen completely out of the zone. Not much you can do with that pitch. To the plate now, Byron Buxton. Buxton ahead in the count, three balls and a strike. You know, I kind of see why his ERA is so high coming into this one. He's just putting these guys in too many good hitters counts. That'll catch up with you real quick. The three and one pitch. Hit on the ground to third. Reined in. Wow, the throw pulls him off the bag. And as a former pitcher, I can tell you, nothing is more painful than having to get extra outs in an inning. That should have been out number three there. Instead, he has to refocus and get back to work. Colby Allard answers the call from the pen here in the fourth as they didn't get the outing they were hoping for from their starter. Colby Luis Arias will be his first assignment here as he'll face him with runners at first and second and two away. The 1-1 home is in there for strike number two. He'll be fine coming out of the bullpen in this one if he can keep the ball around the knees like that. Four runs, five hits, and no errors in the ballgame for Minnesota. fouled away fouled off trying to hang a zero here's the pitch Grounded toward Odor at second. And the two out threat will not come to pass as the inning is over. Twin strand a pair. They lead it four to nothing. Leading off the inning, Matt Duffy, and they'll need him to get something going here. Lots of baseball left in this one as we're still early on, but you don't want to fall too far behind. They're already down by a bundle, and one of the things you want your leadoff guy to get on and set the table for the big boys to start driving in some runs. Ready on one and two. And it's fouled away. The one-two. It high and deep out to straightaway left. Back goes Rosario, and it's gone. A solo home run here off the bat of Matt Duffy. Fourth home run for him on the season. As they get on the board, it's 4-1 to one now. Well, if you're going to get your first hit of the game, you might as well do it with a bang. He thought he could squeeze one past him, but he thought wrong. Standing in now, Willie Calhoun. And he fouls this one off. Bases are empty here, nobody out. And another foul ball. The next 
Uh, he can only battle for so long as he's finally set down here after an eight pitch at bat. Now One gone in the Texas the sport. Here. And up to bat Joey. next, the left handed light tower Gallo. power of Joey Gallo. Gallo swings, and this one is crushed out to right field. And that is off the wall. Absolutely scorched that base hit. Worthy of some show track love, and as you see it, it came off the bat at 110 miles an hour. That's definitely squaring a ball up. Into the box, Danny Santana. Pulls this one into the air out into right field. Under it is Cruz now for out number two. Now Settling in now, right Shin Su Chu. So Shin far, 0 for 1 with a fly out. The 1 1. Swing and a miss, two and two now. Swing, line, drive. That's going to be trouble. So now they'll have two men in scoring position following the two out double. No mistake what he was sitting on, looking for a dead red piece of cheese, middle of the plate, and he didn't miss it. At the plate, Ronald Guzman. And he takes ball four. So now at least they're set up for the force at any base here with two away. Up next for the Rangers. The catcher. Robinson. So our situation as the base is loaded. Two men out. And that'll bring up the catcher, Robinson Chirinos. Two out, base is loaded. Now a slur is going to bounce up to the plate as he lays off it for a ball. He went with the off speed there once he got him to 0-2, but now that they both missed, I think we'll see more of a challenge pitch here. You don't have to give in, but you can't be too cute either. The 2-2. Got him. So the damage winds up not being as bad as it could have been as they'll strand the bases loaded. The side is retired. Rangers draw just a bit closer thanks to this solo home run. We played four. It's now a 4-1 game. Next for Minnesota, Jorge Polanco. He'll start off the fifth in this one. The last at bat, Matty V. We heard this guy's a good fastball hitter. He got a fastball and didn't miss it. We'll see if they pitch him a little bit differently this time and mix in some off speed pitches. Two and one. This one's down to third. Scooped up. And the fifth inning will start with a ground out, one away. The batter, the right fielder, Nelson Cruz. Now batting, Nelson Cruz. In his last at bat, he popped out in foul ground. Yeah, Matt, he's got to make an adjustment right here. His swing definitely broke down, dropped his back shoulder, and thus the result was a terrible pop-up foul. And he lays off for a ball, two and one. Base hit, line drive into the corner. And this one bounds around against the wall. That was pretty obvious in live action that that ball was hit hard. And after analyzing it with our show track technology, we see that our eyes did not deceive us. 114 miles an hour was the exit velo. An impressive swing of the bat. So now to the plate. Miguel Sano hit on the ground toward the left. Odor on to Guzman. They get them both, and that retires the side. Around the horn they go. Five to four to three to end the threat. 
More to come on MLB Network Sunday Baseball after this. Welcome back for the bottom of the fifth. Here's Heidi Watney. Matt, I talked with the Rangers manager during the inning break about the team's offensive production to this point. And he told me he's pretty unhappy with their discipline at the plate in this one. He said their pitch selection has been the main reason for their struggles today, as far too often they've been swinging at pitches outside the strike zone. That's leading to a lot of soft contact and easy outs. So the focus going forward is on shrinking the zone and forcing the opposing pitching to throw more strikes. Good stuff, Heidi. Thanks. The one two. Swing and a miss, and he'll start the fifth the same way he ended the fourth with a punch out, one away. This pitching staff has done a really good job no against this Number guy one. in this series. This is a really good hitter, and it's not easy to make a guy strike out five times in a series up to this point, but that's what they've done to this guy so far. Stepping in now, Elvis Andrews. Hit back up the middle. Oh, and he has some trouble with it. And the recovery won't be in time as he'll beat the throw to first. The third baseman, number six. So a runner at first with one out now. And that means the corner infielder, Matt Duffy, will bet next. Yeah, that last at bat, Daddy, he turned that fastball around. He didn't hit it a ton. He didn't hit it a country mile. But hey, listen, a home run is a home run. One and one, here it comes. Lofted in the air out toward right center. And that'll get down for a base hit. And that runner will go no further than second as there are two aboard now. Hey, pitchers, you better start taking notice of this guy. He better be circled on that lineup part because he's on fire. That's his second hit of the ball game right there, and I don't see him stopping. Into the box now, Willie Calhoun. And that's on the outside corner, one and two. Just hung in there on that one. Fifth inning here in a four to one ball game. Oh and he lays off the fastball away, so it's two and two now. It looked like he tried to get him to chase on that pitch there, one and two. A good idea, but I think now he has to challenge him a little bit. He doesn't want to get into a worse situation with the cleanup guy up next. Open to send him packing. Pitch on its way. In the air now out to left field. Rosario is there. And he brings it in for the second out of the inning. Here's Joey Gallo now. No Fielder. Joey Gallo. Swing and a ball hit softly on the ground. On to first, and the Rangers squander a good opportunity here as the side is retired. So it's no runs on two hits, no errors, and two men left stranded. Five innings complete. Twins are out in front, four to one. Now at the plate, Josh Donaldson. He looked to bounce back after striking out his last time up. Yeah, Matty, big time K last time up, and it's been a tough series for him so far. You can tell he's just not seeing the ball off this team. Let's see if he can make an adjustment right here. Smoke toward third. Throw to first gets him, so the leadoff man's retired here to begin the sixth. The catcher, number eight. Ready eight. once again, Garver. Mitch Garver. He was a ground out victim last time up. This is swung out and missed, so it's two up, two down to start the sixth inning. 
This is why it's so hard to be successful as a hitter when you fall behind in the count. One and two, you're probably expecting some sort of off-speed pitches, but when the pitcher offers up a good, hard fastball, it's pretty hard to adjust and catch up to it. In now, Eddie Rosario. And he goes against the shift there as this is on the ground to the left side. Rolanda Guzman at first, and the inning is over. Down go the Twins in order as they hold on to a 4-1 to lead. Bottom of the inning now, and standing in is the veteran outfielder, Danny Santana. And that one misses, so the leadoff man will head down to first on ball four to start the bottom of the sixth. And that's what you want from your leadoff hitter. Shows some great patience and discipline, making the pitcher labor to start the game. The result is a leadoff walk and a chance to make some early noise. At the plate, Shin Su Chu. It was a two-bagger for him in his last at-bat. Yeah, he did a great job to go down and get that one his last at-bat. But I got to think they're going to pitch him up, maybe elevate something in the zone. Interested to see how he approaches this next AB. Full count now. And this is drifting foul back into the stands. Sixth inning, four to one is our score. Swing and a ball lifted in the air toward the line and right. In there, a base hit. And that runner will go no further than second as there are two aboard now. Man, he's seeing it like a beach ball right now. Even his soft contact is finding balls there. He's making it nearly impossible for a pitcher right now. Up, down, in and out, hard, soft. Anything you throw forward to home plate, this guy seems to somehow be able to find a hole. Here's the Minnesota skipper making his way out to the mound. And a change is in the offing as that'll be all for his starter this afternoon. So he'll head for the showers as he stands to win this one if the bullpen can find a way to protect his three-run lead. Tyler Duffy takes over on the mound here with nobody out in the sixth inning. Into the box, Ronald Guzman. And he lays off again, ball three. Hit well on the ground to first. And a sliding attempt at first, but this sneaks by him, a base hit. So much of this game is situational hitting, guys. Nice job there. Yeah, you've got to find a way to pick your teammates up when you're given the chance. And he doesn't try to do too much right here. He just takes what's there. Safely on second, and his buddy is high-fiving teammates in the dugout. To the plate now, Robinson Chirinos. Too high there and maybe a bit outside as well. Two and one. A couple of righties starting to loosen now in the bullpen. Now the 2 1 pitch makes him swing and miss on a ball out of the zone for strike two. I can't imagine he was sitting on fastball at his neck right there. A sec now as that ball finds its way into the outfield. A base hit. And the run is in to score from third. And the second runner will stop at third. And they're at the corners now with nobody out. Man, that's a nice job by the batter right there, keeping the front side in. Not easy on a curveball. Would have been easy to throw to front side and hook that foul. But he was able to stay inside and drive it for a base hit. At the plate now, Rugnet Odor. 
And this is swung on and missed. And boy, they took care of a key man there. One away. This has not been a weekend to remember for him. He's just been completely lost at the plate, flailing all over the place. Now that's his sixth strikeout of the series. They've really got him figured out. Standing in now, Elvis Andrews down the third baseline. Runners are at first and third, one away. That misses, and we're even at two and two. Fouled away. He's set. Here's the 2 2. Into center field, line drive base hit. And to score from third, the tying run. Hey guys, I like the execution by the batter there. He got a hanger in the middle of the plate. He could have come unglued, but he didn't. He stayed focused and drove a line drive base hit. Stepping in, Matt Duffy. Three across so far in the inning, and another two out there on base. Yeah, Matt, and this inning's really starting to get away from him on the defensive side of the ball. Straining the rest of those guys out here feels absolutely essential for them at this point. Runners are at first and second with one away. A slider that time that runs away. It's three and one now. There isn't a hitter alive that doesn't love hitting in fastball counts like three and one. It's usually a pretty fruitful count in terms of getting a pitch to drive. Can't keep that one fair, and now the count's full. Fastball, strike three called as he couldn't pull the trigger, and there are two away. Big strikeout for the second out there, but he's not out of it yet. We'll see if he can feed off that K, wiggle out of the jam, and keep this game tied. Stepping in now, Willie Calhoun ripped down the first baseline. And he'll step on the bag himself, and the inning is over. So three runs on four base hits, no errors, and two left. Seventh inning coming up, and we are tied 4-4. Seventh inning ready to roll, and here comes the first baseman, Max Kepler. Set to deal on a ball and two strikes. He pulls this one high and deep to right center field. And this is going to get down for what should be extra bases. And there's your potential go-ahead run. And your go-ahead run is in at second base here with a leadoff double. And he obviously didn't let last night's hitless outing get to his head too much because that's his second hit of the ball game. This one, a double. I'm sure he's feeling a lot better about the way he's going right now. In now, Byron Buxton. Now a changeup. Hit on the ground to shortstop. On to first with it is Andrus, and it's in time, one away. And now back to the leadoff spot in the Twins lineup. Stepping in, Luis Arias. It's been a rough go of things at the plate for him so far, but his guys are looking for him to change that right here. Yeah, nothing better than coming through for the boys in a tight game, Matt, especially when you're kind of due to do something productive. that's going to be caught out there at short and they are wearing him out down there two away now the bat number 11 fourth down Jorge, Jorge Polanco will stand in again as we flash you back to the early stages of this ball game there were fans still finding their seats as he launched his second home run of the game as he was off to a fast start indeed Two strikes to the twin shortstop. 
Got him to chase after the curveball below the zone there. That was a really nice pitch. It can be a really tough one to lay off of as a hitter. Go ahead runs in scoring position here with two down. Swing and a miss got him reaching. Chirinos corrals it. And the throw to first ends the inning. One left for Minnesota. This game's all tied at four. Sergio Romo gets the call from the pen to take over on the mound and start the home seventh. Sergio Romo. Last half of the seventh here, and that'll bring up Joey Gallo. A ball and two strikes. Here's the pitch. Swung on and missed. Really fooled him that time for the first out. Now batter, fielder. Digging in the switch Danny. hitter, Danny Santana. That's 0 for 2 Adam. from him so far in this one. Here now the 2-2. Two -two. Ripped on the ground to first. And he'll take it to the bag himself for the out. So digging in now, Shinsu Chu, two for three with a double on his line so far. The one two. All knotted up, four four, the score here in the seventh. Neither guy willing to give in, and the ad battle continue. Sharp ground ball toward the hole. He's got it. On to first, and this will remain a tie ball game as the inning is over. Rangers set down in order. Score remains tied at four. Ready to begin the eighth, and that'll bring forth the veteran outfielder, Nelson Cruz. Set to deliver on two and one. Now a ball pulled hard but fouled off to the left. As mentioned earlier in the broadcast, this game has the potential to result in a series sweep, but of course with a tie game on our hands, that is no foregone conclusion. Never easy to sweep. This is one of those teeter-totter games, back and forth, back and forth, as we're tied going into the back end of this game right now. It'll be interesting to see how this one plays out. Every base runner in a close game like this really matters, so you can't afford to be giving out free passes this late. And he lays off, ball four. Now the potential go-ahead run is on base here. Man, when the game is tied, the last thing you can afford to do is walk the leadoff hitter. Got to focus on getting that ground ball now. Now it would be the Minnesota DH, Miguel Sano. He could really use a knock here, 0 for 3 in the game so far. Crowd gets up for the 3-2. Pretty well struck, high and deep to left field. A ball that's carrying. On the warning track, he makes the catch. So a runner at first now with one away. And that brings up the former American League MVP, Josh Donaldson. Possible go-ahead runs on first, one away. And a change up here, but that's taken low in the dirt for a ball. Still two and two.
Hoping to send him packing. Pitch on its way. And try to hold back, but he won't be able to as that's ruled a swing, and there are two away now. Fooled him just enough with that pitch to get him to go around, according to the umpire. Sometimes it can be really tough for these big, strong guys because once they're committed to swinging, it's hard for them to slow their swings down, and that appeared to be the case there. The 1-1. One -one. Left field and deep. Going back is the left fielder at the track. The wall. Gone! And that two-run home run delivers an eighth-inning lead. It's a two-run shot to straightaway left as they've taken a two-run lead. was hoping and praying he'd go down then he quiets him in a hurry with one swing of the bat and more importantly than quieting the crowd it gives his guys the lead that's what we call timely production by a big time power hit. into the box now Eddie Rosario and this one is over and he works the count back to two and two and for the opposition wrapping this up and salvaging a win would at least make their trip out of here a little more pleasant this could be just what the doctor ordered nobody likes to get swept on the road so winning this one could be big for building back team morale the Rangers entered the day looking to wrap up a big series sweep but it's going to take some late game heroics in order to make that a reality Never easy to sweep any team, but this is a close one, and there's an old saying in baseball, a bloop and a blast, and if they can stay close, get a base hit, get somebody to hit now one out of the ballpark, no, they're not out of this one yet. Nah. What's the saying? Uh, when you find yourself in a hole, the first thing you should do is stop digging. Well, the guy on the bump obviously hasn't heard that one. Ready now, Max Kepler. He'll try to follow up the double in his last at bat with another big hit right here. Well, he got a good pitch to hit last time up. Looked for it up in the zone and didn't miss it. Those are the pitches you only get maybe once an AB, maybe once a game, maybe once a week. So he certainly capitalized on it last time. Oh, not cheated on that one. It's two and two. With this one almost in books, the story was clearly the long ball. What are your thoughts on this offense, fellas? Well, Matty V, I don't know what your thoughts are. Oh, and this deflects right off him. The throw to third, and he is in there. Well, I think it's safe to say the ice is melted on this guy. He had been cold coming into this game, but that being his third knock, I guarantee you my man's smiling on the inside. Brett Martin enters the ball game out of the pen looking for the final out here in the top of inning number eight. Number 59. Brett Martin. Byron Buxton will be the first one to greet him now as he'll do so with runners at the corners and two out in the inning. Both teams have nine hits on the scoreboard. Fastball right back to the mound. And he'll flip it onto first, and with it, that ends the inning. The two-run score for the Twins, both coming on this two-run home run. Home half of the eighth coming up. It's the Twins six and the Rangers four. Trevor May is on to pitch out of the bullpen in the bottom half of the eighth. Bottom of inning number eight set to go. And next to bat will be the first baseman, Ronald Guzman. Even though we're moving into the back end of this game, they're only down by a couple of runs. You know that old slogan, a bloop and a blast. They could certainly use that right now. Protecting with two strikes, one out of the zone that time, but he stays alive. This is on the ground over to first. And the off-balance throw gets him. Nice play for the out. 
Now batting. Stepping into the box, Robinson Chirinos. Singled home a run in his last time up. Bases are empty, one man out. And this will miss down low in the dirt, so he's worked it full now at three and two. Now action in the bullpen as their closer starts to get loose out there. Here comes the payoff pitch. He takes strike three called on the fastball. Couldn't pull the trigger, and there are two away. Stepping up to the plate, Rugnet Odor. They're quickly down to their final four outs here tonight. Hitters count now. Here's the two and one. Line toward the gap in left center. Rosario is going to have room out there as he puts this away to retire the side. One, two, three, go the Rangers. They trail it here, six to four. So the lineup flips over and digging in, Luis Arias struggling so far in this one and looking to erase his 0 for 4 ball game right here. And now a curveball that's low and in the dirt for a ball. It's 2 and 1. Here it comes. Well above the letters with the fastball that time. Well ball three and the twins would love to get this inning started any way they could to get that leadoff guy on. Skied into straightaway right. Under it is Chu as he takes it in for the first out. Now the next twin up or hit Polanco. He homered back in the third inning in this one. Hit the target, but this is low. Two and one. One out, nobody on. Count even at two and two. Popped him up. Torinos is under it. Two gone. Now batting. Here's Nelson Cruz now. He's got a hit in three at bats to this point. The 1 1 is swung on and missed, and that's strike two. He's going to step out of the box, adjust his bat and gloves, and pray he gets the exact same pitch as that one. Because if it comes again, we like to refer to that one in the biz as a cement mixer. Now a drive by Cruz. Deep left field. But that'll stay in the park as it's off the wall. The relay, not in time, and he's in there with a double. The more things change, the more they stay the same. This guy's been producing at the plate all year long, and this at bat is no different. He's probably surprised it didn't leave the yard after the season he's having, but he'll just have to settle for a double. to the plate now Miguel Sano and he struck him out so a good pitch there and now they're going to need to string some hits together in this last at bat if they want to get back in this thing danger averted following the two out double more baseball on MLB Network right after this Taylor Rogers is the man called on to close this one and earn a save in the night 55 Taylor Rogers Ball set for the bottom of the ninth. And stepping up is the shortstop, Elvis Andrews. Hey, it's never easy scoring runs against a closer, but this lineup is setting up perfectly right now as the leadoff hitter leads off this inning. Two balls and a strike to the Rangers' leadoff hitter. Well hit, but also well foul into the seats and left. The 2-2. Hit out towards second. Right to him. Throw on to first in time. One away. 
the third baseman. Coming to the plate now, Matt Duffy. He was hunched out looking at strike three last time through. Yeah, Matty, and hopefully he got it out of his system. Especially now, he's got to bear down. He gets the two strikes in this spot, has to put the ball in play. Two balls and a strike to count. Now the 2 1. Fouled off. Bouncer to the left side. Donaldson's up with it. On to first, and they're an out away. Two gone here in the ninth. Striding forward now is the DH, Willie. Willie Calhoun. He comes to the plate as the last chance for his side. Two out here in the ninth. Swung on, and this ball is absolutely crushed. Forget about it. And gone. An absolute bomb. Solo shot to right center, and this will make things interesting at this point. It's now a 6-5 game. Joey Gallo. Ball Slider can't find the zone here, and he's behind now three and one. Time to narrow your focus up there at the plate. In a one-run game, he doesn't want to walk you, so there's a good chance he's going to get something to handle right here. Fans on their feet in a one-run ball game in the last of the ninth. And there's a called strike two, as now they're down to their final strike this afternoon. Texas down to their final strike in this one. And he lays off ball four. So now the potential time run here is aboard late in the game. And I'm sure the manager is just fine with that. I mean, it's better to battle a slugger like that to the end and end up walking him than serving on up where he can really hurt you. Stepping up now, Danny Santana. He'll be looking for something he could drive into the gap and drive home that time run from first. Fans on their feet in a one-run ball game in the last of the ninth. One and two now as that one's fouled off. Has them down to their final strike. Here it comes. Hit fairly well out towards straightaway center. And that is going to wrap things up as the catch is made and the Twins have finally found their way back into the win column as this ball game is over. Yeah, it's only been a week, but I guess it probably feels like a million years ago since they had their last win. But this six-game losing streak is behind them now, so we'll see if they can string some W's together. A one-run game, 6-5 to five, the final today. The Twins came through late, taking the lead in the eighth to secure the victory. Sergio Romo wins his fourth game out of the bullpen this year. Taylor Rogers closes the door for the save, his 24th on the season. So that just about does it for Mark DeRosa, Dan Plezak, Heidi Watney down on the field, and the rest of our crew. I'm Matt Vaskersian. Thanks for watching MLB Network. The final line score for this afternoon's ballgame for the victorious Twins, six runs.